everybody can use a little extra storage. So today I wanted to see if I could build a wall storage cabinet completely out of two by four lumber. And yes, two by fours are not the most practical for this type of build, but I wanna give everybody as many options as possible. So let's do this. When you're looking for your two by fours, try to get the ones with the smallest knots possible. Some of these have really large knots and that can cause a problem. Otherwise, look for the ones that are also straight as possible. Yes, two by fours are not always that straight, but that's okay. Just look for the straightest ones and those should work. Next up is to figure out the dimensions for this cabinet. I figure about 12 inches wide, maybe 12 inches deep, and about 24 inches tall. That should give us plenty of storage and be able to fit in most locations. I first want to start with the frame of the cabinet, and that'll let me to kind of build everything off of it. So the tallest piece is 24 inches, so I need a 24 inch piece off the two by four. Then I'm going to rip the 2x4 down on the table saw to get about 3 quarters of an inch strip and I'll get 4 of those. Then I'm going to repeat that process 2 more times. One with a 10 and a half inch board and one with a 9 inch board. Now I have 4 pieces of 9, 10 and a half, and 24. To attach the frame together, you could use a number of techniques. You could just glue it together. You can use pocket screws. You could use dowels drilled into the ends. You could make these a little bit longer and do some kind of custom joinery like rabbits or dados or uh, half laps, whatever you would like. I think I'm going to use pocket screws because a lot of beginners have this. Now here's the pattern of the frame when it's put together. Now the sideboards actually having laying on their side, so you're looking at the bottom or the top right now. Now this is the pattern. I'm going to put them together. So I'm going to need pocket holes on each of the short boards on each ends of them, not in the long ones though. I then lined everything up on one side, made sure it was square with this corner square, and then I've clamped it in place so I can install the screws. Here's a little tip for you when you are using pocket screws, especially with thin wood like we're using here, there's a good chance that you might get some cracking in the end. If that happens, of course, take the screws back out, glue it back together, give it some time to dry so it has strength again. And then you might want to consider taking a long drill bit or maybe a drill bit with an extension and going in the very little tip hole that the pocket holes are put in there and just drill out just a little bit and that'll create just a little extra room in there to screws to go in it's less likely to crack on this thin wood and once we have the side pieces done we're going to flip them up on edge and then we're going to take the ten and a half inch piece we're going to use it to connect these together with the frame together looking on the inside width you can tell this side it's a little bit wider than this side, so make sure we use the widest side for the front so you can get stuff in and out of it easier. At this point, if you happen to have some thin plywood, you could use that to make the sides, the top, and the bottom, and make this a quick build. But I want to still try and make this completely out of just basic lumber, so let me go cut down some more 2 bys I trimmed this board down to 24 inches so that it is the same as the height of our frame. Now, I want to trim this into a bunch of little slices so I can just line the sides and the back with it as well. But first, I need to trim off these little round edges that are on the 2x4 so everything can be nice and square. Now let's test these out to see if they'll fit. They're cut to about 3 inches each, so it should equivalent to 12. Almost perfect. Now, I noticed on some of these I was cutting, there's some blade marks, there's little grooves where it didn't, you know, it didn't cut 100% flush. Some of these, like that one right there, has a little bit of a burn mark. Now, this of course is more of like a garage type cabinet storage piece, and so it's not that big of a deal. You could always throw some paint on here and that would cover up a lot of these little marks or just leave it as is, which is what I'm planning on doing. Now, I gotta cut three more sides. Now that all these are cut out, you might wanna go through them and pick out the worst ones. For example, this has a nice little groove and a crack in this board. This can be a back piece, and any of the ones out here that are in the worst shape, put them on the back and you don't have to worry about seeing them. Now it's time to start to install these panels on our frame, but I'm not gonna use glue for this, because since this is solid wood, there's still a chance for it to expand and contract. But rather, I'd suggest something maybe like some finishing nails, which I'd probably put two on each end, or if you happen to have a brad nail or use that, and then we can go along adding the rest. I now have all the walls in place, and I'd previously cut out enough wood to put the door on, but I'm gonna wait on that for just a minute, because I wanna see if I can get the bottom and the top in place, just to make sure I have enough clearance for everything, and then we'll work on the door. For the bottom and for the top, I want them to rest against the inside of the frame, so I need to measure this and cut some more strips. And if by chance you have any tear out or any nails sticking through from when we were installing the walls, this will be covered as well. Next, I need to notch out all four corners so it'll fit around the frame, and then we can install it. Now, 
Now even though a quarter inch thick piece of wood may not seem like it'd be very strong, considering this is just a smaller area, just 12 by 12, it's pretty sturdy and should be able to handle most things you would stick in a cabinet. My original plan for the top was to install these panels on the inside, just like I did on the bottom. But after looking at this, I think I'm gonna change this and install these right on the top. That'll give me a little bit of additional storage on the inside, but you can build this however you'd like. For the door, I've saved four of the nicest panels and I've taken the best sides and I've faced them straight down. Now once I push them together, I'm now going to go cut some strips a little bit shy of the outside so it doesn't hit the door frame. And that way, once I have three of them in place, it should be nice and sturdy and work well as a door. I next laid out the door panels and I made sure they were as square as possible. And I'm taking these strips, which I cut into half inch thickness, and I'm going to position them, making sure that they are just out of the way to the frame, and then I'm taping them down. I did all this because I'm hoping to install brad nails from the front side, but I've never tried this before, so let's see if it works. Very carefully. All right, as long as you're gentle, everything worked. Now let's give this a test fit. Oh yeah, it fits on there nicely. Now for the hinges, I want to keep it simple. I'm just going to use a set of utility hinges. I actually pulled these off an old cabinet that I was disposing of, and that's a good source of finding these for free. But otherwise, you can buy these at a local store for maybe two or three dollars. So keep that in mind. The screws ended up being a little bit long for this setup, but I wasn't surprised because the wood is real thin right here. So I'm thinking about either putting a little piece of wood over that or maybe even grinding those off. There are a lot of options you can do to hide or just make those disappear. I decided to go with a little piece of wood on the bottom and on the top to cover those screws, which should give a little more strength for this hinge on this door. It also adds like a little bump stop, so when you open the door, the door doesn't go too far. And for the handle, I did something very similar. This is about an inch tall, which would be pretty simple to grab, and I just currently have it gluing together. Now while I give that handle just a minute to dry, I wanted to show you all the scrap leftover I had from two two by fours. That's right, I built this entire cabinet out of two two by fours. In my area, two by fours cost less than $4 a piece. So we're talking less than $8 needed for all the wood to build this cabinet. Add another $2 for hinges, and that comes to less than $10. And yeah, I know that doesn't include all the, the nails and screws, but that's still really inexpensive for a really nice cabinet. Let's take a little bit closer look at this cabinet. It's really simple to build. Of course, uses minimal lumber. It looks really nice. I love just the wood grain on it. Of course, you can paint this. You can do whatever you want, stain it, make it look nice. Now, if you're interested in hanging this up on the wall, as long as you can go through at least, I'd say two screws through this top piece of frame wood and the bottom piece of frame wood, it should stay up really well, as long as you can hit the stud in the wall. Or you can do maybe a French cleat system, as long as, again, you hit that, that frame setup back here, it should hang up really nicely. Overall, I'm really happy with this project. Now, of course, if the door, by chance, it starts to warp on you over time, you can always put maybe some uh, magnets up here, a little metal strip on the top and the bottom, and it should stay closed decently well. Overall, I'm happy with the build, and I hope you get a chance to build one too.